Hey there folks, Rel here. Today we'll be doing an abbreviated beginner's guide to using the NC's starting LMG, the NC6 Gauss Saw. And also, just so everybody knows, I will intentionally be pronouncing the word Gauss incorrectly throughout the entirety of the video. I believe it's actually pronounced Gauss. The reason for this guide in particular is because, as far as starting weapons go, the Gauss Saw is probably the most difficult to use starting weapon in the entire game. This is why newer players tend to hate the thing with an extreme passion, while more experienced players tend to refer to it as the God Saw, and that's due to it being one of the most powerful and potentially accurate infantry weapons in the game. By comparison, most starting weapons are extremely easy to use because they're pretty well-rounded. They're decent at pretty much everything right out of the box, and the same could probably be said for the Gauss Saw, except that it doesn't really hit upon its true potential until it's decked out in attachments. So if you're having a hard time using this weapon, do not feel bad, because we're going to give you some guidance on how to make it effective. That said, it deals 200 damage per bullet within 10 meters and drops off to 167 damage at 85 meters. This makes the Gossaw the hardest hitting LMG in the game, able to drop enemies in 5 shots to the chest within 10 meters or 6 shots at max distance. In addition to being the hardest hitting weapon in the game, it also has the highest kill potential of any starting weapon in the game due to its 100 round magazine, which in a best case scenario means that you can drop 20 enemies start to finish without reloading. So those are the upsides, but here's where the problems really begin. In addition to the highest damage per bullet, the Gauss Saw also has the slowest rate of fire at 500 rounds per minute. It has the longest reload time in the game at 6.5 seconds short and 7.5 seconds long, and for those who don't know, a short reload is triggered when you still have at least one round left in the weapon, and a long reload is triggered when your weapon runs completely dry. So short reloads are obviously quicker than long reloads, but how much will vary from weapon to weapon. The Gauss Saw's first shot is always perfectly accurate, provided you're standing still and aiming down sights. But after that, it has to cope with the highest vertical recoil in the game, and an annoyingly high first shot recoil multiplier to boot. If I lost you there and you'd like to learn a bit more about how recoil works in Planetside 2, maybe understand what I just said, then check out the video in the description below, or click the annotation to open it in a new window. These three things are huge problems for players who don't position themselves well, don't know when it's safe to reload, and can't aim or compensate for recoil very well. Which is to say your average Planetside 2 player, let alone a fresh player who just started up the game for the first time. But before we get into strategies to help circumvent this weapon's weaknesses, we're going to run down the suggested attachments in order of unlocking. The first is a 2x reflex sight for 30 certs, a regular forward grip for 100 certs, a compensator for 100 certs, an advanced forward grip for another 100 certs, and optionally a 3.4x or a 4x scope for another 30 certs. I'm not going to suggest high velocity ammo, though it is an option, and if you learn to handle this weapon very well, it is there if you want to bump up your damage at medium range. But it's not something that we're going to really touch upon because it's going to make the weapon a lot more unwieldy than it is to begin with, and actually less effective at those extremely long ranges that you can be fighting at. So again, generally speaking, I'd stay away from it entirely. Building the Gauss Saw up this way will slowly increase its effective range over time, while taking away a bit of its versatility in close quarters. Here's a quick rundown of tips to make the weapon useful, and we'll break down more specific strategies in just a bit. But the first is to always aim down sights. Rarely will you need to hip fire the Gauss Saw, and whenever you can avoid it, do. Don't jump. Jumping will immediately maximize your cone of fire, and if you fire before hitting the ground, that cone of fire is going to stay maximized until you let off the trigger and let the gun settle. If you can help it, stand still or crouch, preferably both. This will greatly increase the Gauss Saw's accuracy even while bursting, but do try to stay mobile while you're under fire. Compensate for the first shot recoil multiplier by aiming a bit lower than you think you should, then drag straight down on the mouse for subsequent shots. I talk in detail about this in the How To Compensate for Recoil video which I also mentioned earlier. Don't reload after every kill. Remember that this weapon has insane reload times and reloading after every kill is just a bad habit, so take advantage of the weapon's high capacity and wait to reload 
until you know you can pull it off safely. Lastly, and maybe most importantly, is to fight with friends. Friends or random allies just hanging around. The Gossaw can be a great support weapon thanks to that high damage and magazine size. So if you just clip an enemy with a single bullet, you'll give your allies a good chance of finishing them off. Now to break down some more specific strategies, there are three big ones that I would suggest. The first is to choose your effective distance. I wouldn't use the Gossaw within 20 meters or 30 meters, at least not if you're new to the game, or new to slower firing weapons in general. This means staying away from corners and doorways, or even inside buildings at all, if you know enemies are likely to come by with an SMG or a shotgun or a close quarters carbine. You want to abuse the Gossaw's accuracy by keeping your engagements far enough out that enemies will have to struggle to hit you. The Gossaw tapers in effectiveness out of the box around 60 meters or so, and the iron sights really don't do a good job at letting you know exactly where those bullets are going. So as soon as you can, grab the 2x reflex sight, it'll be a night and day difference while helping you stay on target. After you slap on your first forward grip, the weapon will become noticeably more accurate, maybe bumping that effective range out to 70 to 90 meters if you have the 2x reflex sight attached. When you start to feel comfortable with your 2x reflex sight, then give the 3.4x or the 4x scopes a shot. I suggest using the ones that have crosshairs instead of the ones with a red dot sight, and actually I'm going to annotate the name because I can't remember it off the top of my head, but it'll make it a lot easier to stay on target. So my personal scope of choice outside of the 2x reflex sight is the crosshairs of the uh, 3.4x scope, and I really think that it fits the weapon and the ranges at which it's effective. With each progressive upgrade, you will easily squeeze out more effective range, and what I mean by effective range is the number of bullets that you can easily put on a target. The word easily is subjective, of course, but even with that being the case, you won't even get that potential effective range unless you know how to burst fire your weapon, which is what I wanted to talk about next. The range at which you're fighting will determine how many shots you want to put down range at any given time. Rarely will you ever just let the thing rip on full auto unless you're in pretty close quarters. You usually want to fire in groups of 6 to 10 shots or less depending on the range. At extreme ranges, you should be single shotting the Gauss saw, unlike what you're seeing me doing here. This is pretty much an example of how not to use the weapon at extremely long ranges, which is why you won't see me hit or kill much of anything, and this is actually about uh, 300 meters if I had to guess, and the weapon is certainly effective there, but I should have been firing single shots and letting the weapon reset. Because remember that the first shot is deadly accurate, but the same cannot be said for subsequent shots, especially at this range. As a side note, the Gossaw cannot switch firing modes, so it is stuck on full auto, meaning that you need to practice proper trigger discipline in order to keep this beast in check. The last piece of advice I'd give to newer players is to look for cover whenever you can find it, and stay close to it when you know enemies are around. And preferably, that cover should, at the very least, completely shield your body and your head while in a crouched position. But the best cover will actually come right up to the neck, exposing very little of your body while still allowing you to aim down sights. This sounds obvious, but hard-hitting weapons, regardless of the rate of fire, can make the most use out of cover for a couple of reasons. The first, which I'm going to just do a different video on because it's uh, a little complicated, is client-side hit detection, and I'm not going to explain it here. But the second is that every time you pop up and land one or two shots on the enemy, that's a lot of damage, at least a third of their life. So if you crouch back down and shield yourself from their return fire, they have to make at least one of two decisions. They can either retreat, advance, or I guess they could stay there. But if they do stay where they are, unable to fire on you, then they're going to die the next time you decide to poke your head out. And if they make the mistake of running toward you, they're still going to die unless you miss or unless they can close the gap fast enough. So the only real option is just to retreat or hope that a buddy can finish you off. And to sum that up for you real quick again, stick near cover as often as possible, peek out, fire off a few shots, then get back into cover, peek out, shoot, cover, peek out, shoot, cover. This goes over and over and over. This makes the weapon not only extremely deadly, but also extremely annoying to deal with as long as you're fighting from the proper range, which should be, at the very least, outside of that 20 meter mark. So all in all, the Gossaw is a great weapon, but it is difficult to use. 
Hopefully this will help you get started using the weapon effectively if you're a new player, but even if you don't play NC, a lot of this information can cross over to any slow firing, hard hitting weapon like the Terran Republic's TMG-50 or the Vanu Sovereign's Ursa. As a side note, if I had my way, I wouldn't actually give the Gasa to the Heavy Assaults by default. It's the only weapon in the game that falls so far outside what a newer, low aim player finds easy to use. And I understand wanting to emphasize faction traits, but the Gasa goes to extremes. A more suitable starting weapon would probably be the EM6, or most fittingly, the Gauss Saw S, which would likely have to be renamed. But, if you found this video interesting, helpful, or entertaining, please feel free to like, subscribe, and tell your friends about the channel. And whether you're an experienced player or not, please let me know your experiences with the Gauss Saw. Do you agree? Do you disagree? What helpful tips would you provide to newer players? Please put a comment below, or drop a video response if you're really feeling fancy. Thanks very much, folks. We're all signing off.